cold days when you're standing still out painting, your feet will turn into blocks of ice. Hey, welcome back to the channel. My name is Kyle Martin, and in today's video, we're gonna head out into the January landscape on a sunny afternoon for a little plein air painting. I've got the painting framed up right here. I don't always frame my paintings up before the videos, but I did take the time to frame this one up. And after we check out the painting session, we're gonna be talking about my favorite piece of plein air painting equipment and something that I really rely on while painting in the month of January. And that's my pack boots from Cabela's. So stick around for the end of the video and I'll tell you all about these boots. Let's head out into the field for a little plein air painting in January. We have a really warm and atmospheric January afternoon today. And I drove around for about 20 minutes looking at stuff to paint. And then I came over this ridge and I saw the subject matter right behind me. And I pulled the van over and we're out here to celebrate this January day by creating a plein air painting of it. So the real subject matter today is going to be the atmospheric bluffs behind the farm. And the farm is just catching some late afternoon light. And one good thing about this scene is that those little bits of warm light falling onto the barn is creating kind of an orangish color. And that's gonna contrast against a lot of the blues from the winter atmosphere. Let's get set up and let's make this painting. I've got the drawing done and I've got the painting laid in. What does this look like? Here it is. I've got a fresh and lively lay-in happening right now. Well, we had to abandon the painting today because the clouds rolled in. I'll head back again on a similar day when we have that beautiful quality of afternoon light and I'll finish that one off. I'm not going to abandon the painting. I love the energy that I brought to the painting today. I'll go back another day about one o'clock in the afternoon and make that painting sing. It went from sunny and beautiful to now it's kind of raining actually. Even though we are celebrating a great January day, Mother Nature is a playful muse. Making a painting is like catching a butterfly. Sometimes they flutter away right before you catch them in your net and that doesn't mean that we're still not gonna get out and try all right that's it for today if you're enjoying these videos why don't you just click the little like button and make sure that you're subscribed you could even leave a comment and those are just free ways that you can help my channel grow i don't receive any money for doing this channel and it's a labor of love isn't that what landscape painting is it's just a labor of love and i like sharing it with people and i'd like to share it with as many people as possible Welcome back. We're out here for day two to work on this North Freedom winter farm scene. The first day that I was out here working, it was quite warm. It was in the mid 20s out and I mean, it felt like a heat wave. And today we're back down into those single digits. It's a cold winter day, but I'm going to hopefully be comfortable out here painting for the duration of my session. And that's just because I have really good boots on. These are pack boots from Cabela's. The boots are the one thing that, that I have invested money in for my winter painting setup. I've painted in these below zero and my feet are never the thing that gets cold. If you live in a cold climate, you have hats and mittens and nice jackets and long johns and stuff like that. But the one thing is the boots. Our feet are in contact with the ground. When you're out walking in the winter, you don't necessarily get cold in the feet because the blood is pumping through your system. But when you're outside standing for a couple hours making a painting and it's in the single digits or colder, your feet really can start to get cold and freeze. 
But I'm outside doing a lot of painting in the winter. My feet used to freeze. But then a couple of years ago, I invested in good pack boots and it really has, uh, and it's been the best piece of winter plein air equipment that I could that I could hope for. Other than that, today's painting. I was out here two days ago starting this painting and I wanted to create it start to finish in one shot. However, the clouds rolled in and because it was such a nice warm day, I kind of approached the painting in a slapdash manner. And there's a lot of errors on the canvas at this point. However, I'm smart enough to know that all that I can put on the painting is shapes of color. Every painting is just made up of the same four things, drawing, values, colors, and edges. I can see that there's some drawing issues happening in the painting. I kind of looked at it when I was at home and I figured that I'd come out here, I'd restate a lot of the drawing. I'm gonna inject some stronger drawing in the painting today, which is gonna lead to better shape making. You know, my values and, and stuff like that are mostly probably fine. That's more in the color mixing stage. Even though I have a start that was kind of done hastily because I was working against the weather conditions, I think I have about an hour and a half today to really make this painting work out. And that just kind of depends on me relying on the fundamentals and doing the right thing. So the first thing I'm gonna do is restate a bunch of the drawing. And from there, it's gonna be time to, to put a lot of color into the painting. Um, oh, the other thing is that it's, I started on a, I had a 20 by 24 inch canvas and I'm just gonna cut this down with an X-Acto blade and a straight edge once the painting is dry. Um, because it's probably going to end up being a 16 by 20 inch painting. And so I'm going to lose a little bit of sky and I'm just going to cut the panel off there. So that's why you can see that piece of green tape that's on the, can on the painting surface at this point. The thing now is just to return to the fundamentals and do all the things that I didn't have time to do the other day and to finish off this painting. <laughs> Okay, here's our final look at today's painting session. I'm getting to the end of it. Ooh, look at the moon. The reason that I can tell that I'm nearing the end is that I'm really just stepping back and taking a look at it as a whole. I can see a couple of things that I probably would change. However, some of those things are like right here on these, uh, these sheds, I think that I could clean up some of those shapes, but I actually think it's more interesting the way that I've placed it with a lot of the underpainting shining through or coming through. And so I'm just gonna leave some of that stuff for now. But I think that for the most part, I've reassessed and restated the things that I needed to restate. Again, I start with the idea that all I can put up here is drawing, value, color, and edges and I restated some of those things that I think needed to be redone. And from here, I'm just gonna head home. I think I got a walk with the dogs in me yet today. And so that's what I'm gonna do. Um, I had success with the boots. The coldest part of me is my left hand here where I'm holding the knife and the brushes. Both hands were quite cold when I started painting, but I took off the plastic glove on my painting hand 
And I don't know if the plastic glove makes my hand colder or what, but about the only thing on me that's cold is my nose and my left hand. My feet are great. I can recommend these boots and I'll put, put what they are in the description. But thanks so much for being here. I'm gonna pack it up and head home and I will cut this one down, put it in a frame and we'll take a look at it when it's framed up. And if I have anything to change, I can do it then. Now, one other thing is that it's kind of a painting of a lot of small shapes. Of course, I'm overlooking this valley and these bluffs and stuff like that. That's, and that is the idea that I wanted to have in the painting today. However, nice big shapes are always good. With landscape painting, we're often left with more questions than answers. And with landscape painting, it's always about taking it back to the fundamentals. And for me, one of those fundamentals is that I should always paint things with big, easily seen shapes. Today, it was just a lot of small shapes. And while I think that I do have a, a nice snow scene to take home with me, and I'm always reminding myself to go after the compositions that have the nice big shapes. So I'm gonna keep my eyes peeled on the way home and we'll find another one for next time. So anyway, from, from the side of the road out here in North Freedom in January, thanks so much for being here. We'll do another one soon. So a little bit more about the boots. I've had these boots for about five years now. I used to go out plein air painting and I could stay warm pretty well. I mean, my mom and Corbin both work at Land's End. So I always have a wonderful warm Land's End parka that I wear out in the field. I have hats. It's easy to layer lots of layers on the top and bottom to maintain warmth. As far as gloves go, I just wear two or three pairs of those magic gloves, those stretchy gloves that you get at the dollar store. The problem was is that I could never keep my feet warm. On cold days, when you're standing still out painting, your feet will turn into blocks of ice. For other activities, it's probably not important to have a really good boot. If you're looking to go out just hiking in the woods or snowshoeing or cross-country skiing, of course there's a lot of movement happening and your body is creating a lot of heat internally. And a lot of times when I'm exercising and moving around outside, I'll be so sweaty that I actually have to lose layers and keeping my feet warm is not a problem. But if you think about people who are standing still outside during the frigid temperatures, it's really important to have a good quality boot so that your feet remain comfortable. If you're hunting, you're trying to be still, it makes sense that hunters would have this figured out. And as plein air painters, we can learn something about keeping our feet warm from the hunters. I knew about these boots, but I just wasn't ready to invest in them at the time. And my mom being the awesome person that she is said, you know, I'll just get you those for Christmas. But she ended up getting me two pairs of these boots. I think it might've been even a buy one, get one free situation. So I actually have two pairs of these boots. And these these are the ones that I was wearing outside in the video and these are a great pair of boots and I'm so thankful that my mom got them for me. And they're Cabela's brand actually and they're the Trans Alaskan Pack Boot. These are a very thick boot. I have some outdoor winter shoes on right now and you can just see that these boots are so much larger and they're just massive in comparison to the winter shoes that I'm wearing. These have a three inch barrier from where your foot sits to where it comes in contact with the snow. And according to their website, it is a NASA inspired solar core insulating aerogel barrier under the feet and around the toes. Okay, whatever type of NASA thing that these Cabela's people are onto, I'm back in it because it definitely does keep your feet warm. It's just like your house. If you have three inches of insulation all the way around your house, you're gonna be a lot warmer than if you had no insulation. They also have pockets to put the little hand warming heat packets inside of them. I don't use that feature, but it doesn't mean that you won't. I didn't even know about it until I just looked at them online. These boots have a liner inside of them. You can see right here, I'm not really, I'm not gonna pull them all the way out, but I have taken them out before and you can wash that liner out just fine. They have this little 
cinch right here and so they stay tied. They slip on and off very easily. The best part about them is that they're good not only for the winter, but they're great for the wet spring as well. I always love going out and painting the Baraboo River in the spring of the year. As that snow melts, the Baraboo River just rises and we're in a kind of a low area here at the farm and it's very swampy, very marshy. You know, you'll remember the farm has flooded before. I have been walking in these boots to water, like right here, walking through huge flooded areas and marshy areas out here in the farm, and my feet have never gotten wet at all. I'm not talking about some boots that have a waterproof coating or something like that. These are waterproof. No water will get inside of these. And I didn't even know that they were that good when I got them, but that was just an added bonus. It's just a no-brainer to have a decent pair of boots. To me, it's a no-brainer to have a decent pair of boots. There's nothing complicated or hard to understand about these boots, really. You just slide them on and your feet are gonna be comfortable. Your feet don't get so hot that you're sweating. They're just, you don't even think about them. And isn't that what people say all the time, is if a piece of gear is really good, you don't even think about it. It's just there and it's good. That's this week's video. We'll catch up with you soon. Thanks so much for being here with me. And I really do appreciate you all being here and leaving comments and, and we'll do it again next week. I don't know what's planned for then, but we'll take it week by week and we'll have another plein air upload next Friday. All right, be well and I hope you have a good weekend.